Ohio State, who missed last week because of an injured ankle. The wind playing havoc uh, with the football, so Nick Lowry will get some help on the kickoff. Well, he gets help, but the thing about it is the man that helps will be actually the safety, and that's Clifford Hicks. He will now become the safety along with Lowry, and they just changed positions. crowd into it early. The Jets during the course of the week asking for more crowd support here at home. This is by Note. Out to the 20. Nice stutter step move as it crosses the 30-yard line. A 24-yard return. Marcus Turner made the tackle. A look at the Denver offensive line. Dave Wydell playing for the injured Keith Parks at center. Gary Zimmerman, one of the best left tackles in the National Football League. John Elway, the quarterback, two powerful running backs in Bernstein and Russell. Miller, Derek Russell, and Gary Evans, the receivers, and Mike Pritchard comes in as the extra wideout. And the handoff to Bernstein. Rod Bernstein. Stopped by the combination of Ronnie Lott and James Hasty, a 13-yard pickup. The Jet defensive line, Marvin Washington, Donald Evans, Paul Frazier, Jeff Lockerman. Lockerman and Washington will be flip-flopping as they did last week to give different looks to the tackles. First NFL start for the second-year man out of Nebraska, Marvin Jones, and Marcus Turner comes in as the nickel back. First down picked up by Bernstein, Denver, from its 43-yard line. Again, Bernstein, this time he is dropped behind the line by Mo Lewis, the outside linebacker. Well, I don't like this formation. Three wide outs in the tight end. You only have one guy in the backfield, and that's Bernstein. He's the only guy that can really carry the ball because we know Elway is not going to be running with the football unless he really has to. So it puts a lot of heat on the offensive line, and the defense of the Jets reacted. It'll be a second down and 11. Denver planning to compensate for the absence of the injured Shannon Sharp by using more of the two back sets with the combination of Russell and Bernstein. And Elway to throw. Going sideline. Good hit by Mo Lewis as he makes the tackle on Anthony Miller, who caught only two balls last week against San Diego. That is a pickup of five yards. It'll be a third and about six. We'd like to welcome those of you who have been watching Pittsburgh and Cleveland. The Pittsburgh Steelers knocking off the Cleveland Browns 17 to 10. We're just underway here at Giant Stadium. The Broncos, third and six from the 47. Elway could not find anyone. And he is stopped by Paul. First down. This is one of the things that the Jets have concentrated on. They want to keep Elway in the pocket. So if he's going to go up front, you're going to watch 91, Paul Frazier, make the reaction back in. You see him spin back into the middle. He makes a tackle. If he doesn't make that tackle, Elway has the first down. Outstanding defense. The punting unit checking in. That's Tom Ruin, second-year man from Colorado. Had only one punt last week against San Diego for 59 yards. And Clifford Hicks, who did an excellent job against Buffalo, is back and lets it fly by and it bounces inside the 10. The Broncos able to down it 41 yard punt. When we come back, the Jets go to the offense for the first time. Looking at John Elway's numbers a week ago, a very disappointing performance, though, particularly the way the game ended against the Chargers. A rough week for Elway, who was not accustomed to lose a game in the manner that he did last Sunday night and losing it at mile high in Denver. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 the last time I got my heart that broken was when Janet dumped me my sophomore year in college. So, <laughs> But I was able to come back from that one, so hopefully I'll come back from this one. <laughs> well, Paul, that was a couple of days after the loss. He was able to lighten up on it a bit. Yeah, he was, a little, he was light yesterday we were talking to him. I mean, you know, they're a relaxed football team. They know they could have they could have won the football game, and, and but they didn't. And the Jets take over at their 11-yard line. Boomer Esiason to throw on first down. And Ryan drives it complete to the tight end, Johnny Mitchell. 
stopped by the strong safety Steve Atwater. A look at the Jet offensive line. They played very well last week in Buffalo. Criswell, Duffy, Sweeney, White, and Malamala. The quarterback is Asias and Richie Anderson at fullback for the injured Brad Baxter out with turf toe. Monk Moore and Mitchell are the receivers. James Thornton, who had a good one last week against the Bills, comes in when they go double tight end. It's a second down and two. The Jets at their 19. We have no score with three and a half gone by. First quarter. And the gift to Johnson. Short pickup by Johnny Johnson. As you look at the Denver defensive line, both Ted Washington and Dan Williams are playing hurt. In the linebacking court, Carl Mecklenburg is back in the starting lineup. Played only involved in only 12 plays last week against the San Diego Chargers and the major change here Steve Atwater shuffles to strong safety playing at that position for the very first time in the NFL in the regular season Rondell Jones starting at free safety because Darrell Hall has a pinch nerve in his neck and there is Steve Atwater it is a first down for the Jets what a great attitude Atwater has you know it's a really the first time that I ever had a chance to sit down and talk with him and everybody was so impressed with him doesn't make any difference where he plays he will be effective still one of the hardest hitting safeties in the National Football League Steve Atwater sixth season out of Arkansas and he said he's going to save it for the second quarter yes <laughs> he would say about that. first down play and Asiasen able to connect over Asiasen stopped by Ray Crockett Art Monk on the reception, so that keeps the streak going. It'll be a second down and one at the 30. You heard the familiar sound of the NBC chimes, which will usher in our 10-minute ticker from here on in. It'll be a second down and one at the 30-yard line. The Jets going double tight end, Johnny Mitchell and James Fortin. Bonus ball control. These are short passes. Nothing downfield. You know, seven, eight yard plays. Problem with the snap. And Asiasen able to cover up on it. Yeah, Boomer was telling us the other day he feels the Jets must control the ball. He picked a number. He said, what, 37 minutes? He felt that last week the ball control frustrated the Buffalo offense, and he feels the Jets must do the same today. He felt that uh, Buffalo tried to force things because they didn't have the ball that uh, frequently. It's, it's true. And, and, you know, you look at the Buffalo Bills, it was, they were averaging like 66 plays a game last year and only had like 40-some-odd plays when the game was virtually over. Third down and two. Again, it is Monk. And it's a first down for the Jets. The left corner, Ben Smith, made the stop. Ten-yard advance for Art Monk caught only two balls during preseason, only one catch last week. Yeah, but when you look at the have all the time, and Smith has really no chance against Monk. Monk goes into the inside, makes the move. The offensive line, well, watch the control of the offensive line. Remember, there's no one in the backfield now. Look at the blocking. Boomer has all the time he wants to throw the ball, and when you have Monk one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, Ben Smith didn't have a chance. The Jets' major concern coming into today that they not be overconfident following last week. The coaches warning against a letdown, particularly when they watch the uh, films of the Denver Broncos defensive unit. Johnny Johnson is wrapped up. Short pickup for Johnson. You know, talking to Johnny Johnson yesterday, and we're talking the difference between Brad Baxter and Richie Anderson. He said smooth, which is Brad Baxter, which I learned yesterday. I like that. Uh, when we do him again next week, I can call him smooth because he'll probably be back. But he said, you know, Baxter, you're, you're sure of everything he's going to do. His blocking is a, little bit, is a little bit better. But they do have the confidence in Anderson. Second and seven. The Jets from their 42-yard line. Play action. Denver did not bite. Carl Mecklenburg leading the charge to get to the quarterback, Boomer Esiason. And we'd like to welcome those of you who have been viewing this shootout. Buffalo Bills bouncing back with a 38-35 victory 
over the New England Patriots and uh, Bill Parcells seeing a lot of touchdown passes whizzing by. He's been involved now in two uh, consecutive wild affairs. Over 70 points scored against this New England in two weeks. He's got to take a look at his defense. A hard look at it. Third down, 17, back at the 32-yard line. Asiasen fighting the running room. He was past the line of scrimmage as he pumped. And he's bumped out of bounds by the extra defensive back, Ronnie Bradford. You know, you don't talk about heads up play by Asias. And now here's a guy that shouldn't be running. But when he's running with the football, he's looking at the flag. Watch his eyes. When he comes out of this pocket now, he's running. He knows he needs 17 yards. Now watch. Well, shouldn't you slide? No, he's going to fake and try to get upfield. He has another eight or nine yards. He's not going to make it. First of all, he's not that fast. <laughs> yes. And he'll be the first to concur. Yes, he will. Brian Hansen, who had a good one last week against Buffalo, kicking to the the blazing Glenn Milburn, who had a terrific game last year, opening day here at Giants Stadium against the Jets. Milburn out to the 35, puts the move on as he's hauled down across the 40. Glenn Cotrez made the tackle, 38-yard punt, and a good return. Milburn going for 20. Cow trying to appeal to these fans to set a tone for home games, asking for more vocal support here at home for the Jets. Of course, the players must perform to earn that support. Look at the record over the years from the Polo Grounds to Shea to Giant Stadium. Of course, the Jets have not had that many winning records, and that contributes to the fact that uh, if you're not a good ball club, you're not going to win at home. Leonard Russell on the spin, refusing to go down, picked up a couple. Donald Evans have the wraps on Russell. Right here, we're set for an update. Let's go to Greg Gumbel in New York. Steve Christie, 32 yards out, 52 seconds to play. The Patriots lost 39-35 last week. They lose 38-35 this week. Marv, they're definitely showing week-to-week -week improvement. Yes. <laughs> Interesting way of looking at it. Yeah, I would think so. Six and a half remaining in the first quarter. The out pattern to Derek Russell, who was a forgotten man last week with the addition of Mike Pritchett and Anthony Miller. It's so many receivers for Elway to find, and uh, Russell was uh, not within the game plan a week ago. All right, they're going to go outside with Russell, and this is just a little short pass to the outside. Glenn is there. Aaron Glenn makes the play and stops the first down. It's third and about a yard and a half. Nice play by the rookie. Russell in his fourth year out of Arkansas. Now urging on the defense. Elway picks it, has the first down and more, combining with Mike Pritcher. Brian Washington tripped him up. It's good for a 16-yard game. Boy, you want to you look at a guy, look at this arm. Elway has not lost anything. And his coach said so. Look at how fast that ball gets between everyone. There's just no chance for the linebackers to get back. Marvin Jones was trying to get there, not with Elway throwing that kind of speed. Three for three. John Elway, the last two years, has had explosive games against the Jets. Bernstein. Rod Bernstein stop. Ronnie Lott, free safety. Involved on the tackle. Broncos have try to convince Rod Bernstein to stop hurdling, to stop jumping, because that's usually how he gets hurt. He goes up over the top, they cut his feet out, and he falls on his shoulders. But look at here now. They just told him to lower your shoulder when you make contact. Meet force with force with your shoulders. You're big enough to get that extra yard. Be positive. Second down, seven. At the Jet, 32. Bernstein on the slant. And bottled up again, Donald Evans. Involved. On the tackle, Evans, number 66, in that front line with Washington, Fraze, and Lagerman. Rod Bernstein, last Sunday against San Diego, eight carries, 55 yards, also caught eight passes, which accounted for 67 more. The impressive thing is, look, at almost seven yards a carry. You just got to keep feeding him the ball. Third and four, down at the 28. He was 
trying to get the ball out to Rod Bernstein on the outside, and Mo Lewis just played it perfectly. He had the back coming out of the backfield one-on-one, -on -one, and Elway, for whatever reason, did not see him. Now, I don't believe that the sun was in Elway's eyes at all. He throws the ball, and Mo Lewis was right there to pick it off, and really no one to stop him. Just outstanding defense, and a bad choice by Elway. Mo Lewis with a 67-yard interception return. Ryan Hansen will put it down for Nick Lauer, and penalty flags come flying. Referee today is Tom White. When you take a look at Elway's trying to get out to Bernstein, watch this here. When he throws, look at Mo Lewis. He's right on Bernstein. Now, if he doesn't make that play, Bernstein catches it. He walks into the end zone. This way, Mo Lewis kind of trots into this end zone. What a nice play. Heads up defense. Ball start. Here is 77 out. It's Bernstein. It's turned to the inside. He set it to the outside where the ball was thrown. The ball was a, it was a bad throw, but Lewis made a great play. For Mo Lewis, his first career NFL touchdown. Third round pick in 1990. Stepped into the starting lineup from day one. Maybe the best draft pick in the Jet career of general manager Dick Steinberg. I like his attitude as far as the offense is concerned. Score 70 yes. points. <laughs> Score 70 points, and I think we can win this one for you. That is usually his advice to offensive coordinator Ray Sherman. Isn't he a little scary, though, when you're talking to me? I don't want to see him gain a yard rushing. I don't want to see him gain a yard passing. I don't want to see any points on the board. And if we got him by 40 points at the half, let's beat him by 80 before the game's over with. All right, off the penalty. Lowry's kick for the extra point will come from 25 yards away. And he puts it through. 4-16 to go in this first quarter. The Jets have a 7-0 lead. Oh, coming up at halftime. The Jets with a 7-0 lead on the Broncos. 4-16 remaining in this first quarter. Pete Carroll 42 years old, he will be 43 this Thursday. And Paul, at times, I think he makes Richard Simmons appear low-key. <laughs> he is so animated, and, and the guys are responding to it, and that's the great part about it. Can't wait to talk to the press, can he? About anything, everything. He actually does enjoy that aspect of the, uh, of the job, and uh, you can't say that about many NFL coaches. The kickoff from Lowry to the combination of Russell and Binote. And it is Butler Binote on the return again. He has some terrific moves. Taken down at the 33 by Marcus Turner. Good return. It's 22 yards for Binote. We'll be right back. For some Jet fans who have taken the requests of Pete Carroll very seriously. You know that they had eyesight and they couldn't read it so they had it large. <laughs> A first down at the 33 as we resume. Four minutes, seven seconds remaining in this first quarter. And Denver down, seven up and Leonard Russell hit by Marvin Washington back behind the line. We're set for another update. Let's go to Rick Humble. Marvin and Paul are making some noise in Dallas. Emmett Smith is the cause from two yards out, up and over. And the Cowboys have the early lead on the Oilers, seven nothing. Let's go back to you at the Meadowlands. Thank you, Greg. Loss of three. It'll be a second. And 13 back at the 30-yard line. 67-yard interception return for a touchdown by Mo Lewis for that 7 up and jet lead. Off the screen, Bernstein cannot get to the outside. Marvin Washington with the tackle. I can see how we had this has screen called and they're going that way, but you, they're going to have to get the ball to Anthony Miller. Now, the Jets are, are playing Miller one on one right now with Hasty. And, and that's good coverage, and Hasty is, is, is an excellent cover guy. But Anthony Miller coming on, you see Hasty, look at the room he's giving him. Now, right there, you can see that's one on one coverage on the outside. Miller's got the first down, he's got to be able to throw. Now they'll double him. For the third and ten, Milburn has checked in. Elway smothered. Penalty flag is tossed. Elway taken down by Alfred Ogles. 
Bruce Bee. In his fourth year out of the University of Houston, come on to spell Paul Phrase. So let's check out the flag. It's only against Denver, and they're going to refuse to have the punt. But Lagerman's the guy that makes the play also makes it happen. But Lagerman comes from the outside, and he's coming up over the hands to face in the 64 offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Elway is limping. It's on Melander, though, with the hands to the face. Lagerman really comes out from the outside and forces the play up into Oglesby. Elway's hurt. get a report on John Elway. And checking it out at the Denver bench as Clifford Hicks handles the punt. And Hicks trying to pull away, but he is stopped out of the 30-yard line and a flag thrown downfield. 43-yard punt, only a three-yard return. Darrell Hall involved on that tackle of Hicks. It's against Denver and legal man downfield. They will punt again. Well, let's uh, check out how John Elway was shaken up. All right, Oglesby is 95, and you're going to see him in the middle of the screen. But you see the guy coming in. Washington's in there. Lagerman's in there. And he just, I don't see where Elway got hurt. And he had his left shoe untied, whether that's his ankle or not. Oh, he steps on the defender as he stepped up and might have twisted his ankle. He's all right. Yeah, apparently trying to walk it off. As Tom Rowan lines it up back at his 10-yard line, and once again he will punt to Clifford Hicks. 2.25 remaining. And this opening quarter. Line drive, short punt. Here comes Hicks. Nice change of direction. And the crowd responds to the return by Hicks. Only a 36-yard punt and a 19-yard return. The tackle made by Rondell Jones. I remember, he watch, watch Hicks. He'll make that move. He sees no place to go outside. Now, straight up the middle. Get what I can. And almost gets the play. Number 40, 40 Hall trips him up. But I don't know if Hicks would have scored. But you know the interesting thing? We talked to Boomer. He said of all the plays last week was the play that Hicks made after the Bills had touched the ball on a punt. And we said it on the air that you can now pick up the ball, run with it, fumble it, and never lose the ball. Hicks made a heads-up play instead of the ball being at the 10, made it, got it the ball in the 25. And the Jets start out at the Denver Bronco 41-yard line. Anthony Johnson is now flanked out to the right side. A handoff to Johnny Johnson. Spins his way, able to break a tackle, and gets to the 38-yard line. Among the many problems on the part of the Denver defense last week against the Chargers, uh, they were not tackling well. No, they're, they're really not tackling well. And also, the, the you know, Malamala and White and Sweeney, and these guys are blocking up front. You see the blocking right at the point of attack. Also, the tight end, Johnny Mitchell, is getting a block in there. But Johnny Johnson does that mostly on his own. And remember, it's Johnny Johnson. Yes. Because he said his mother won't know who you're don't Yeah, no, his mother won't know who you're talking about if you call him John. Johnny. <laughs> Second down and seven. The 38. That's Mitchell in motion. Big rush and a Sison got it away, but it was dropped by Rob Moore. Rob Moore last week in Buffalo played despite the fractured left wrist. He was a question mark coming into today, but he is in the lineup playing with a soft fiberglass cast. All right, Ben Smith is the guy covering number 26. But watch this. This ball hits him in the right hand. He just hit it with his fingers. Should have caught the ball because it did hit him in the good hand, did not hit him in the cast. Robin, an interesting time going through security at the, the airport in Buffalo after the game as uh, he was stopped and tried to explain uh, why the uh, the cast set off the alarm, but there is a screw in his wrist, but they did let him go. He made the team play at home. Siason throwing over the head of the tight end, Johnny Mitchell. And again, Boomer facing the pressure. The Jet punting unit now checks in. The Denver Broncos on third down are just teeing off and they're coming. You see Fletcher Dronette is in there also. These guys are just coming. They have no run responsibility. And Boomer Sison really didn't have much of a chance to throw the ball. That was just excellent defense. 
This is Brian Hansen. Man has spent five years with New Orleans, a year with New England, three with Cleveland, and then signed with the Jets as a free agent. Lynn Milburn is back. And this one goes sailing over his head. The Jets will try to doubt it, and they do at the five. 33 yard punt, but of most importance, the ball remaining within the playing surface, and Denver will have to start out from the five yard line. Mo Lewis, who last week had 10 tackles in Buffalo and came up with that 67 yard interception touchdown return. He was telling us the other day about his first degree black belt in karate. There is Mo in action. And uh, there's one of his moves, Paul. Look out. Got some big feet on him, I'll tell you that. Yes. I mean, I, I don't know about the move, but that's exactly what he was trying to show. <laughs> First down at the five. John Elway apparently okay as he hands it off to Rod Bernstein. But again, the Jets are all over Bernstein. He's gang tackled. Kurt Barber leading the way. Kurt Barber came all the way from the other side of the field. They're trying to run a sweep. And when you try to run a sweep and the defense on the left side holds up, Watch what happens from the right side. All the way from the right side, Kurt Barber comes and makes the play in the hole. That's hustle. Time is running down in this first quarter. And the Jets have done what they want to do, control the football. Second down and nine. And it's Bernstein finding the hole this time. Bernstein to the outside has the first down. Across the 20, the strong safety Brian Washington came up to make the stop, and Rod Bernstein rips off 17 yards. What a block by Zimmerman. Gary Zimmerman, number 65, just makes the block. He's coming, the guard and tackle on the left side are pulling. Here comes Zimmerman. There goes the linebacker. Here comes Bernstein. What an outstanding block. That will be the end of the first quarter. to conclude this first quarter of the Jets 7, the Broncos nothing. Well, next Sunday, Sequest returns to on NBC. Second quarter is underway. Off the fake, Elway nearly picked off as Hasty got a hand on it on the coverage over Mike Pritchard. What a great play by James Hasty. James Hasty was covering Anthony Miller down the sideline, but he's going to leave Miller. And watch this, number 40 is the guy. Anthony Miller is the guy in the corner of the screen on the bottom. He's the guy that he lets go of. Hasty comes in and helps out. Just heads up football. Broncos second and 10 from their 23 yard line. The Jets seven, the Broncos nothing. Marv Albert, Paul McGuire from Giant Stadium. Capacity crowd, 77,000 on hand. Home opener for the New York Jets. Here's the draw play for Leonard Russell. And brings to the 27-yard line. Stopped by Donald Evans. Leonard Russell spent three years with the Patriots. Last year ran for over 1,000 yards, but then signed with Denver as a free agent late in preseason. I always said I've never had a backfield this big <laughs> with Bernstein and Russell. Of course, Bernstein is on the sidelines, and he walked off after that last play. He ran the ball. He's shaking up. Six. Elway with the tie. Wide open is Pritchard for the first down and more. Mike Pritchard on the reception, and he's tackled by Marvin Jones. That's good for 18 yards. And this whole thing starts with the offensive line blocking. Look at Elway sit in that pocket. Nobody is even close to him. Elway waits, 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 and then he finds Pritchard. Look at how wide open he is. When the Jets are playing zone defense and Pritchard has that much time to get open, watch this offensive line work. They just do the job. Elway's just standing there looking over all of the real estate, picks out the person he wants. Pritchard, very strong, very strong hands. Second catch for Pritchard. First down for the Broncos. The swing does not connect. Intended for Reggie Rivers, who is in there for Rod Bernstein. I, mean, I don't 
understand is Donald Evans is on coverage. <laughs> he had the back coming out of the backfield. That was a heads up play. Second and 10. And the word on Rod Bernstein, he will return. They are just retaping him. Elway now 5 of 8, 48 yards, intercepted once, and that interception run back 67 yards for a touchdown by Bo Lewis. Minute and a half gone by, second quarter. Again, Pritchett, a gorgeous catch for a first down. Well, he could have gone either way. He could have gone, he, he, which he did. He went to Pritchard, but he could have gone to Anthony Miller on the other side. Elway just drills this ball. This is just a simple post pattern. Couple of steps and then into the post. Here he comes, and look at that ball. Bang, right there. And since Jim Fossil, the offensive coordinator and assistant head coach, has rejoined John Elway with the Denver Broncos, uh, things have certainly taken a positive turn. Leonard Russell on the stop. Short pickup, Donald Evans. And Bob, once again, that's Jim Fossil, a familiar name to New York area football fans. He was offensive coordinator for the Giants under thought by the name of Ray Handley. Extremely difficult times for Jim and the entire coaching staff for the Giants. You can see the difference that uh, Jim Fossil's presence has meant to John Elway. When I asked, you know, when I asked Fossil, we asked Fossil about Elway, how much change he says he's smarter. He understands the game now. Jim Fossil arriving in Denver in 1993. He was the offensive coordinator at Stanford when Elway was there. Elway firing deep. Touchdown. Offensive pass interference. I don't know. It did look like Anthony Miller. There's a flag down, and I think Anthony Miller was pushing off a hasty. Now, this can, you know, the offensive guy can get away with it. The defensive guy, as soon as he puts his hand on the guy, they call it right now. This is really questionable because I'm watching Anthony Miller run down with hasty. And it looked like he pushed off. Because what, you know, this is one rule I talked to you about before, Marv, that I don't like because pass interference, defense, penalty is declined. That's that why I don't like it. Because the offensive, when the receiver goes down, he can lean into the defensive man. And the only way the defensive man can get him off him is by pushing him. Here it comes. Watch Hasty and watch Miller. Here they go running side by side. Watch Miller's hands. Watch Miller's hands. You see him push here? That's offensive pass interference. I'm sorry. However, it is called a touchdown. Yes, on James Hasty and Anthony Miller on a 40-yard touchdown pass play. Caps it off. Jason Elam adds the extra point. Nine plays, 95 yards in four minutes, six seconds. The Denver Broncos score to tie the game. There is one. New Jersey Madelands, the Denver Broncos, and the New York Jets are now tied. At seven, Adrian Morrell and Ricky Anderson are back deep, awaiting the kickoff from Jason Elam. Denver Broncos trying to even the record at one and one. They have not opened up at 0 and 2 since back in 1968, when they went 0 and 3 and then finished 5 and 9 under Lou Saban. While the Jets gunning for their first 2-0 start since 1987, but that a season that saw a strike disrupt things, and the Jets finished with six up and nine down. Here's Richie Anderson out to the 25-yard line. Marv, I'm going to show you something on this thing, and here's why I don't like this, the, way, the way this new system works. Here comes Anthony Miller down. Now, do you see this arm right here? Watch this arm. I'm going to clear it now. But watch his right arm. There's Hasty's got arm on. Stop it right here. He's pushing off right here. They're both touching each other. But the guy you're going to see is this guy, the official in the corner. Watch him. He's blocked out. He cannot see Anthony Miller pushing. All he can see is Hasty grab. That's what like he was screaming. But the touchdown counts. The game tied at seven. The Jets first down from the 26-yard line. Johnny Johnson. Ball control. Really by both teams are trying to control the ball. Denver because their defense is having a problem. Here's Denver. They have had the ball for 11.52. Seven points. You just got the ball in the end zone. The Jets wanted ball control. Only five minutes and 58 seconds. That's not ball control. And the 
jet points came on defense. They have a counter for only 35 yards on offense. While Denver 149 yards. Second down and seven. Again, Johnson trying to pick his way. Talking with Wade Phillips uh, yesterday, he was pointing out that the Jets look to be more conservative in every phase of the game this season as opposed to last season. And the perception might have been the opposite because of Pete Carroll with that gambling fourth and one call against Buffalo. But you know, the Denver Broncos feel this has been a very conservative ball club. You know, and one thing about Denver, when you come off a loss like last week, knowing, you know, they were talking about, they had 47 plays run in the first half of the ball game and were losing, which is almost unheard of. And then lose the game the way they did with a guy like Anthony Miller in the end zone wide open and Elway can't get it to him. He's got to tone this team down a little bit and, and convince them they can still win. Fourth and three. And that is short of the first down. Anthony Johnson stopped by the outside linebacker, Elijah Alexander. Elijah Alexander made a play on the last play, and then comes up and, and, and makes another sensational play. This is what they've got to get. They've got to get some young people to step up and do something on this defensive football team. And the Jets hearing a smattering of boos. Not yet. Oh, yes. Uh, from the crowd off that series as Brian Hansen drops back to punt. That is 20. And Glenn Milburn back at his 22-yard line. Yeah. Short punt. And it takes a Denver hop. Again, you can hear the reaction from the crowd. That is only a 20-yard punt. 9.50 to go in this first half. Marv Albert, Paul McGuire from Giant Stadium. And the Broncos start out from their 46-yard line. Jets and the Broncos tied at 7. Elway rifles it for a hook down, connecting with Anthony Miller. And Elway now 8 of 11, 113 yards off that 12-yard pickup. Ronnie Lott, Aaron Glenn make the stop. And another first down for Denver. That's Greg Robinson, the defensive coordinator for the Jets. Paul, he was defensive line coach the past four years. And Pete Carroll took over as head coach and felt very strongly that he wanted a defensive and offensive coordinator. And I, and I think that's the thing you have to do as the head coach. You put all this stuff together, you got to have other people working with the players day by day. Leonard Russell, that started out as a draw and then went to the outside. It's good for seven. Lott made the stop. Greg Robinson, a teammate of Pete Carroll's at Pacific. They both started their coaching careers as graduate assistants. Greg said he was headed to law school, then changed his mind. Spent eight years at UCLA under Terry Donahue. It was really funny. He says, no one's ever interviewed me before. What am I supposed to say in this meeting? <laughs> Second down, three. Down to the 35-yard line. And here's Russell. And he has a first down. Bobby Houston on the stop. Once again, let's check in with Greg Gumble. Greg? All right, Marv, earlier today in Kansas City, this is the play on which the Chiefs went ahead for Keith. Joe Montana, eight yards to Keith Cash. The Chiefs won a 24-17. The quarterback battle, Young threw for more yardage. Montana for more touchdowns. Young threw more interceptions. Marvin Paul, back to you. All right, Greg. Eight minutes to go here in the first half. And Denver on the move. First down at the Jet 29-yard line. Elway taking the long look. And he had Bernstein wide open. He had Bernstein open. He had Anthony Miller in the end zone. But I think Hasty had already seen the ball being thrown. But this was a fake. This was a fake draw to Russell, which holds the defensive line, and it works very well. Buffalo is the first team that I saw do this. Watch the fake. You see the fake to Russell? That holds the defensive line. Now he's got Bernstein coming across. Bernstein was wide open, but Hasty is pulling off after covering Miller. I tell you, Paul, even with the absence of the injured Shannon Sharp, and now Bernstein is back at the sideline. John Elway's had no problems. Three catches for another three for Pritchard, one by Garrett Russell. Second down and 10. And Elway 
goes sideline, but it's dropped by Derek Russell, covered by Bobby Houston. Well, I, I'll tell you, this is the, the pass that Elway was talking about in the end zone that he threw in a San Diego game, low and away, where no one has a chance, and then it was picked off because the defender went down and got it, dug it out, and then ran 99 yards. This time, Elway is throwing the ball to Russell uh, down and away. No, no chance for anyone to, to get the ball, but Russell didn't catch it. Elway now looking at a third down and 10 at the Jet 29. They go with four wideouts. Miller, Russell, Pritchard, and Cedric Tillman has checked in. Again, he got the tie. Completes to Milburn, but short of the first down. Lynn Milburn tackled by the outside linebacker, Mo Lewis. And now, now they're going to go for a field goal here, and this ball will be spotted. It'll be about a 42-yard field goal, 43-yard field goal. And remember now, it is early in the season, that ball, if they miss it, comes back to the 30, almost 33-yard line. Doesn't go to the, to the 25. Jason Elam, one of the heroes, opening day last year against the Jets. Hitting four of four last week, hit from 25 and hit from 42. This is from 42, and it is good. So Jason Elam puts the Broncos up 10-7 with 7.09 remaining in the half. Next week, we suggest you check the local listings for the game in your area. 7.09 remaining, first half. And the Broncos off the 42-yard field goal by that man. Jason Elam now lead the Jets 10-7. And then we suggest they watch the Miami Jet game, which we'll be doing. Now, you know, the Jets, 14 plays, of all that's all they've run. They've had th three sequence of downs, eight plays in the first one, and they punt it, and three and punt, three and punt. Now, they usually script the first 14 or 15 plays. That's what they've done, because to see what Denver's going to do defensively. Now, the Jets have to open it up. It's out of the Bill Walsh school, where he would script the uh, first 15 plays. Richie Anderson out of the turn and brings out to the 23-yard line. So the Jets back to the offense. Butler by Note made the stop. Marvin, one of the other things in fairness, when we talking to Boomer yesterday or Friday, Boomer said, look at we don't know what they're going to do because they have so many people injured on the defense. They're like, to him, they're like a wounded animal. We don't know what they're going to do. We have to line up in some formations and see what they're going to do. I think now they've seen all the defenses that Denver has. Now they've got to go to work. And the Jets starting out at their 24-yard line. Johnny Johnson, Richie Anderson. In the backfield, Anderson for the injured draft Baxter. A swing pass for Johnson. Johnson has a first down. He rips out 15 yards. The left corner, Ben Smith, and the strong safety, Steve Atwater, made the tackle. Alan Aldrich, a linebacker, number 57. Watch this move. Johnson catches it. Look at Aldrich. He's there. He was going to the outside. Johnson just cuts right back inside, picks up an excellent block and a first down. Alan Aldrich playing for the injured Mark Kroll had a strong preseason but had us problems last week against the Chargers. Just had another problem right there against Johnny Johnson. First down at the 39, 620, remaining first half. And Asias and again able to complete Rob Moore to the 45-yard line. That's his first catch. And again, it's Ben Smith on the stop. Denver has an unusual defense. For me, it is anyway. They have Elijah Alexander, number 58, who is playing out wide on Johnny Johnson on the other side of the field. Now, here's a little check to the outside. Monk clears out. Moore gets a short underneath pattern. It's about a seven or eight yard pattern after seven yards afterwards. But that's a nice play. It's a very safe play. Rob Moore actually said the other day the broken left wrist feels worse now than it did last week. Second down and three. And Johnson able to break a tackle. It appeared the Broncos had him wrapped up. Good second effort. And it's a first down for the Jets. But you know, when you when you keep your legs moving, the continuous effort that you have pays off for you. Johnny Johnson, look at he, his legs never stop. They just keep moving. But that can't hold on to him. And he picks up the first down. Again, I, I said after the first 14 plays, now the Jets will open it up a little bit. Well, Johnny Johnson last week carried the ball 25 yards. A year ago at this time was Blair Thomas, who was considered as the starter, and Johnny Johnson was being shuffled, but now he is the featured back. It's a first down at the 48-yard line. Art Monk with a 
another jet first down as Boomer Esiason was able to pop that one in a hurry. Ray Crockett made the stop on Monk. It's good for 11, and that's the third catch of the day for Monk. I don't care what corner you are. You don't, you're not going to defend this. Look where the ball's thrown. To the inside, Crockett has no chance. Monk is the only guy that has a chance to catch the ball. Picks up nine yards on the play. Perfect pass. And they mark it just short of the first down. Bad news for the Denver Broncos. Rod Bernstein suffering a hamstring injury, and he will not return. And here is Asias and going deep for ball. And he's down on the one. He put a beautiful move on Ray Crockett. A 38-yard pass play. Well, between these two guys, they only... They got two guys with two good arms. That's all they have. <laughs> yeah. Rob Moore has a cast. Crockett has a cast. Both on their left hands. But look at this. Rob Moore is looking back into the sun. This is a spectacular catch. Crockett pushes off. They could have called that if they wanted to. But here it is. Look at Moore. Perfect. Catches the ball. His knees are down. He is at the one-yard line. Look at him looking back into the sun. Cradles the ball in. Crockett's there. Almost a touchdown. First and goal of the Sias and throws for the touchdown. To the backup tight end, Fred Baxter. And the Jets regain the lead. So much for being conservative, huh? And it has been a very sharp start for Boomer Esiason coming off the strong game a week ago. He is now 9 of 11 for 99 yards. The Jets 13 and the Broncos 10. Remaining 42 on that last drive, but I said time of possession, try to control the football. They did control the ball for 342 and scored seven points. That's the most important thing, Mark. Now they get, they've had the ball for 12 minutes. Denver, obviously, is going to have more time of possession at the half, which I'm, I'm saying a long time ago to you that it didn't make, it doesn't make any difference, time of possession, and what you do at the time. The Jets have 14, Broncos have 10. And Lowry put it on the ground. It's picked up by one of the up men. Jerry Evans, the tight end. Anthony Johnson running about of bounds. Touchdown back to the outside. I mean, this, you know, Boomer size and sets this whole thing up, and then all he has to do is just, just pop it out to the outside to Fred Baxter, number 84. Look at Boomer. Wide open. I called that play. I knew it would work. And it did. Fred Baxter in his second year out of Auburn. Fifth round draft pick last year. His first career NFL reception was a three yard touchdown pass uh, from Boomer Esiason in game two at Miami last season. Cedric Tillman on his first catch of the day. That's good for 14. Marvin Jones on the stop as we come up on three minutes to go in the half. Again, watch Elway. How much time does he have? All the time he wants. He's looking for Anthony Miller to the left. He's not there. Tillman back here. They're playing his zone. Tillman's wide open. Makes the play. Aaron Glenn doesn't make the tackle. If you're going to get beat. you got to make the tackle. And then for first down at the 47. to Pritchard and that's another Denver first down James Hasty defending on the play boy can he get it there in a hurry oh. Marvin we're gonna see another guy next week John Elway they can also get it there in a hurry but I mean uh, uh, Marino next week but watch how fast this ball gets there there's no chance for the defensive back Hasty's there the ball is down low away Hasty all he does now is make the play that's good defense but Pritchard's wide open Elway gets it there and credit the Denver offensive line Richard Frank to the right, Miller left. And a first out of the Jet 42-yard line, Leonard Russell. Gets inside the 35. Marvin Jones there to make the stop with two minutes to go in this first half. It's NFL Live halftime report. Greg Gumbel, Joe Gibbs, Mike Ditka. 
standing by to bring you all the news and scores and highlights of today's action around the league. Marvin Jones injured on that last play. Marvin making his first career NFL start. Kyle Clifton bothered by a knee injury he suffered last week. He's been hobbling right throughout. And now Clifton now back on the field. Marvin Jones, a guy who made it back from a fractured hip. And he is headed off. Denver Broncos have lost Rod Bernstein for the rest of the game because of a hamstring injury. Elway looking at a second and two out at the Jet 34 yard line. Two minutes remaining in the half. Reggie Rivers is stopped. Alfred Ogilvy made the tackle. Belander just threw Mo Lewis downfield. <laughs> you get away from me. I mean, they, they do a lot of talking and yapping. And after the play is over with, just throw the guy away. Get away from me. Crowd trying to rev up the Jet defensive unit. Third down and two at the Jet 34. And he's down to the 13-yard line. Ronnie Lott makes the stop. It's a 21-yard pickup as we come up on one minute remaining in this first half. Marv, they're going to take a timeout, Denver. But watch this pass by Elway. And what happens is the defender right here, the defender comes up Washington to make a play on the ball. If we can see that again, I'll show you something that happens. They're trying to make a play on the ball. The ball is there so quick that his reaction is, can I get to the ball or make the tackle? They try for the ball, and then Russell keeps right on going. They break the tackle. When you see the contact of this play, all right, here it comes. So watch this here. Hold on. And I'm going to want to stop it. Right there is when, now that's after the play. That's Lott making the play. It's at the point of contact as soon as Russell catches the ball. Here it is. I'm going to show you something. When he comes down, watch the throw. Hold on, hold it. Stop it right here. See the stop? What he's trying to do here is, is reach in and get the ball. Now he doesn't have enough control of his body to make the grab. Russell keeps his feet going, breaks the tackle, and picks up another 10 yards. And that's the third catch of the day for Derek Russell. He's been an injury play player. The feeling is if Russell can stay healthy, another terrific target for John Elway. Elway now 13 of 18, 170 on. Jets have a four-point lead. Denver threatening. Back to the ground for Russell. This is Leonard Russell. Ankle tackled. And lost a couple on the play. Mo Lewis making the stop. Mo Lewis on the outside. A little toss. And Russell does not get a block from anyone. And I don't know if that's Clark out there or not. That is Clark number 43. Mo Lewis just throws him away. Grabs Russell. Then gets some help from Lagerman down below. But Mo Lewis is the guy that makes the play. A report on Marvin Jones. He suffered a twisted ankle. Will not return this final minute. Elway completes. That is Mike Pritchard inside the five. Stopped by James Hasty. Timeout taken with 20 seconds remaining of the half. It is just shy of a first down. It's third and about one at the four-yard line. I don't know what a defender can do when a quarterback gets the ball there this quickly. Pritchard's going to drive Hasty back to the end zone. Right there. Makes a stop. The ball is there. As Pritchard is making the turn, Marv, the ball is already in the air. There's no chance for the defender to get there. That is just perfect timing between Elway and Pritchard. 20 seconds remaining of the half. The Jets with a 14-10 lead on the Broncos. And when we resume, Elway will have a third and one at the four. Now we're going to give you a look at it at full speed. You saw that in slow-mo. Now watch how fast this ball gets there. Hasty has no chance. Pritchard's making a turn. The ball is there. I mean, Hasty can't cover any better than that. But when that ball's in there in a hurry, that ball is thrown before Pritchard makes the turn. Once again, the impressive stat line for John Elway. That, of course, the case last week against San Diego, the two critical mistakes by Elway, one at the end of the half and one at the end of the game, and it cost the Broncos. Inside handoff, Leonard Russell. And let's see where they spot it. Mark Gunn, Brian Washington, make the stop down at nine seconds. Clock is running. I don't, they're, they're, gonna set, they're not settling for a field goal. 
I mean, we have 20 seconds with Elway down on the goal line. Four seconds. They're going to really have to I'm kick out. the field goal. Denver, that's their third and last charge timeout. 40-second timeout. Because you have fourth down down here, and you only really have time for one play. And they're going to—they're they've got to kick the field goal. They put themselves in a position to do that. And the field goal unit making its way onto the field. Jason Ellen hit from 42 earlier. And so they are settling for the three. Smart move. I mean, that's, all, that's really smart. It's the only thing you can do. I mean, you can't risk not coming away with any points. That puts them within a one point of the Jets in the game. Jason Hill in a second season from the University of Hawaii has a new holder these days. And Jeff Campbell with the departure of Tommy Maddox to the L.A. Rams. This will be a 21-yard field goal attempt. Holder is very important. I know, I know when you bring that up, it really is important because this, this, this is a three-man thing here. It's the center, the holder, getting the ball down, and then obviously the kicker making the kick. And Elam able to connect from 21. And the Jets lead it by one. Still one second remaining, so uh, the Broncos will kick off for the Jets. Not very far. It will be a little dribbler. New York Jets with a 14-13 lead on the Denver Broncos. We didn't think that this would be uh, a, a kind of a blowout game because you look at Denver, they have a lot of people hurt. But you're talking about professional football where people step up and, and are counted for. And in this game, you're seeing it with the Denver offensive defense. I'm very much impressed with Denver's offensive line. They have done a terrific job against the Jets' defensive line, especially in pass protection. That is the defensive coordinator, Greg Robinson. Pete Carroll told us what he's most happy about last week's win in Buffalo is how the players took it all in stride. He feels it's one step on the way to a long season and all they talked about all Boomer Esiason talked about was they did not want a letdown which would be particularly foolish against a club like the Denver Broncos coming off the disheartening loss to San Diego. Exactly. And you, you know you, you look at a team that, that Denver I mean had that game at one time in hand then they lost the momentum at halftime. And even Wade Phillips sat there told us, I was really surprised. I thought my team would just disintegrate. 47 plays in the first half and not leading, but they came back and fought back and had a chance to win. And Elam does bounce it. And it uh, carries through to the deep man, Morrell. Adrian Morrell brought down at the 24-yard line. So this first half comes to a close. The Jets lead by one. We go to NFL Live after these messages.